untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Explorer Games video. Today we're taking a look at an Absan Greasefang Parhelion combo deck, which is one of the best decks in the format at the moment. This is a combo deck trying to bring back Parhelion 2 out of our graveyard. The 8 mana 5 5 vehicle has flying, first strike, and vigilance, and whenever it attacks, create two 4 4 white angel creature tokens with flying and vigilance that are also attacking. And the crew cost is 4, which is quite convenient, as Greasefang has 4 power and says at the beginning of combat on your turn, return target vehicle card from your graveyard to the battlefield, it gains haste and return it to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. So if we can put Parhelion in our graveyard, we can already bring it back as early as turn 3, crew it and attack for 13 in the air, leaving us with 2 4, four angel tokens to finish the job. And then uh, Greasefang of course is the centerpiece of this deck that we're trying to play on turn 3. We can also bring it back from the graveyard using Can't Stay Away, which returns a creature with mana value 3 or less from our graveyard to the battlefield and then if it would die exile it instead and can even be flashed back for five mana so if we mill both can stay away and grease fang which can easily happen in this deck we can still bring it back on turn five at the very least and gives us a little bit more staying power in the late game if our opponent has a lot of interaction and then besides Parhelion, we also have a one-off copy of Sky Sovereign as another decent vehicle, a 6-5 flyer, and when it enters the battlefield or attacks, it can deal 3 damage to a creature or planeswalker an opponent controls, so it can deal 6 damage on the turn that we reanimate it with Grease Fang and attack. And then four copies of Asika's Chariot complement our game plan nicely, because at four mana it's still very realistic for us to just hard cast Chariot, but if we didn't mill Parhelion, then Chariot gives us a very good backup plan of making a 4-4 four four that is joined by a pair of 2-2 cat tokens, and when Chariot attacks we can copy another token so we can make more cat tokens on the way out. And then as far as discard outlets go, since we can of course sometimes draw Parhelion and we want to be able to put it in a graveyard to bring back with Greasefang, we have four copies of Rafine's Informant, which when it enters a battlefield allows us connive, so we can draw and then discard. If we discard a non-land card, it also gets a plus one plus one counter. We can also use Lilian of the Veil's plus one ability, saying each player discards a card, so that's another way for us to discard our expensive vehicles, but we can also use it for additional interaction with a minus two, making the opponent sacrifice a creature for instance and then if we're in a pinch we can also target ourselves with Thoughtseize if we need to discard one of our vehicles but this is mainly meant to take a look at the opponent's hands to maybe take away some counter spells or instant speed removal that they may have for a Grease Fang and then we've got several ways to mill additional cards into our graveyard using a Stitcher Supplier, a 1-1 one -one that when it enters or dies lets us mill three cards so we're happy to chum block with it early to fill our graveyard to hopefully find Parhelion. We've got four copies of the new Seder Wayfinder added in the latest Explorer Anthology, a 1-1 one -one that when it enters a battlefield can reveal the top four cards of our library and put a land card from among them into our hand the rest into our graveyard and we have a relatively low land count in this deck so Wayfinder is perfect for hitting our land drops, especially if we need to get to 5 to flash back a can't stay away while putting additional cards into our graveyard. And then we also have 4 copies of Grizzly Salvage which we can cast at instant speed, so that has the advantage of sometimes letting us play around sorcery speed graveyard hate. Let's say the opponent is playing a red-black midrange deck and has a graveyard trespasser to exile cards from our graveyard, then an end of turn Grizzly Salvage milling an expensive vehicle can maybe still set up the combo, and Grizzly Salvage mills 5 cards and can select both a creature or a land to put into our hand, so if we don't have a Grease Fang already, we can maybe grab one using Grizzly Salvage. And then we've got our four copies of Grease Fang, of course, and the mana base has a few more goodies with all the channel lands, and the Abandoned Mire especially is also useful, since we can channel it and then bring back a Grease Fang from our graveyard, in addition to milling a few cards, so that's another way to get back our legendary Okiba boss. And Boseju can also come in handy at maybe destroying an opposing Parhelion to buy ourselves an extra turn. And then the mana base also has a ton of these dual lands, and we have the privilege of having eight fast lands in these three colors with Concealed Courtyard and Blooming Marsh. So we have access to a ton of dual lands that don't necessarily cost us a ton of life, because we do need access to all three colors relatively early, so mana fixing is important. And then we can also count on Seder Wayfinder and Grizzly Salvage to potentially fetch a few extra lands. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand's quite promising. We've got Informant to discard Chariot and bring it back on turn 3 with Greasefang. 
could also opt to play Wayfinder on two to maybe mill over Parhelion instead, which could be higher upside. But we'll wait and see here. And then sequencing the lands is also interesting. Makes sense to play tapped garden on one. Although if we draw another marsh or courtyard, we may regret it. Gigantha could point towards a more aggressive deck, so I'm gonna lean towards preserving my life total. Liliana's nice too. So turn two. Yeah, I think informant discard chariot is good enough for now. And then if they go all in on Hoplite, Liliana can just answer it with a minus two. Arcanists, that's a scary one too. Okay, so Grease Fang bring back Chariots. Seems reasonable for now. And then I could also send an informant. And our opponent concedes. Yeah, not quite Parhelion on three, but still too much pressure for the heroic deck to overcome. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand's great. We've got informant to discard Parhelion, Grease Fang on three, just need an extra land, and we'll be on our way. So hopefully, no interaction from our opponents. Discard spells or insta speed removal could be bad. A Dread Wander points towards black aggro. Grizzly Salvage we cannot quite cast since we don't have the uh, black or green mana in play. So next turn could be awkward if we miss a land drop. But any land will cast Grease Fang. Put on black or green with the gutter bones. So maybe a collected company aggro deck with cards like Rotting Regisaur. There's a land so that's going to make things easy. Grease Fang bring back Parhelion. Crew attack. And then could send an informant, could leave it back. Doesn't make a huge difference. So yeah, that's turn three combo on the play. Which is going to be pretty rough for most decks to deal with. Fatal push can maybe kill an angel token. But next turn we can play Liliana, discard Parhelion once again to bring it back. And uh, that's just going to be too much. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Missing Grease Fang. We've got Parhelion and Chariot to potentially discard. And a Wayfinder to mill. So is this hand good enough? It's definitely borderline. No discard outlet for Parhelion. Can cast a Chariot on four. So kind of our fair plan could still be somewhat decent. And then if Wayfinder mills can't stay away. Or Grease Fang or a combination of those. That could be good. So don't love it, but I think it's potentially still keepable. And if Wayfinder mills a Parhelion, then we could still have the combo online on turn 3. Alright. Let's see what we get. Grease Fang hits the graveyard. Opponent's Green-White's Angel Life Gain. Which is a deck that can easily go over the top of our Parhelion, so can't feel too great about that. Let's have a look with Thoughtseize, maybe take a Collected Company. We've got Steel Seraph, a Righteous Valkyrie, which is probably what I'm going to take here. Or for Steel Seraph can give Jada a lifelink. So the Isika's Chariot plan is definitely not going to be good enough to get there. So do I just play Informants to discard and draw? Maybe find something like a Grizzly Salvage to try and find Grease Fang that way? Or a Can't Stay Away, which I could still cast right now? Or do I play a Chariot anyways, just to apply a little bit of pressure on the ground? But I just don't think it's going to be dealing any meaningful amount of damage. So let's go for Informants. And then I should probably play a land first. So I can still play Grizzly Salvage afterwards. If we find it. Stitcher Supplier instead. So we'll discard Parhelion. 
Play supplier, and then hope to mill, can't stay away. And there it is, so next turn we can bring back Parhelion. Is it too little too late? It may be. So yeah, there's not a ton of matchups where actually bringing back Parhelion isn't just game over, but against Angels where they have lots of big flyers, that's one of those where their natural game plan lines up favorably. So we just need to have the combo very early on in the game to overwhelm them. Otherwise it's uh, not necessarily going to get there. So our opponent can play two more angels here thanks to Jada. So youthful into inspiring overseer is already quite good. And our opponent's got a 4-6 flyer. So yeah, that's going to be a little bit too much for us, I'm afraid. Don't think there's any point in attacking on the ground. Opponent does take the trade. And then we should be dead on the way back here. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and has turn one Thoughtseize, turn two Salvage, missing white mana for informants, but Salvage likely to find it, and then Liliana for additional interaction. So, we're pretty far from necessarily comboing off, but we have a solid early plan with lots of disruption, and then we can try and get there in the mid to late game. Yeah, could certainly mulligan this and look for a more combo heavy approach. But uh, I'm down to try this and see if this uh, heavy disruption plan still works. Opponent on mono white aggro. And uh, could take aspirant as the only two drop. Even though Adelin is probably the scariest card that applies the most pressure. Okay, there's our white mana. Still in favor of Grizzly Salvage, and I don't think we have a great use for Boseju. And our opponent found a Lieutenant on two. So we could just sacrifice with Liliana. And Wayfinder over our land, I think. So in the graveyard, there's a can't stay away. And for now, Liliana minus two, so Adeline doesn't get out of hand. And next turn, we can play a few more creatures to mill. Happy to help, but I'm taking. <laughs> Haven't you ever heard of personal space? And then we just need to find a Grease Fang and some vehicles. So what's step one for us here? Probably Rafine's Informant. Found a land which we can discard here. Go for Wayfinder. And then there's Grease Fang and Parhelion, so next turn we can bring it back with Can't Stay Away. So I'm okay discarding a land now. Alright, so seems like we're ready to combo next turn. Brutal Cathar to exile one of our creatures. Can still trade for the token. Depending on where Adeline goes, probably goes after Liliana. Because yeah, if we can trade for the token and keep our Liliana, then we can minus two and get a real creature. Which is probably worth it here. They could also have Brave the Elements for single white. 
So that's one way they could still kill us. So let's just minus Liliana right now. Get our informant back, perhaps. And then we don't need to flash back. Can't stay away. Can play one for two mana now. So they may have another Adeline in hand. So bring back Grease Fang, and then I can still play a Stitcher Supplier. Don't think they have any interaction for single white mana. And now that Adeline's gone, even uh, Brave the Elements wouldn't be all that threatening. So best they can do is play another Brutal Cathar. But then the Angels can still get there if they go after Grease Fang. If they go after the Angel token, then we just bring back Parhelion once again. Since we can, can't stay away, bring back Rafine's Informant and discard Parhelion. And our opponent has seen enough. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and our hands got double Thoughtseize facing a Keruga companion deck. So probably a Fires of Invention type of deck. In which case, Thoughtseize is pretty useful. Can take away a Fires, maybe some other high impact card. Problem is, we don't have a lot of self mill, so we're really counting on Stitcher Supplier to mill over both a vehicle and a Grease Fang. So, this is a matchup where maybe we're just better off setting up the combo quickly since the opponent's got a relatively slow deck and uh, they wouldn't necessarily have a lot of early interaction to stop us. So, I think we look for a more combo heavy approach, and this can certainly get the job done. Salvage, hit or land drop. Liliana can discard Parhelion at the very least to then set up Grease Fang. So I think we can let go of Asika's Chariots. Because an early Thoughtseize is great, but if our opponent has a powerful late game, we're sort of playing into that by extending the game. Whereas we want to keep the game nice and short. Opponent fetching a mountain. Fable Passage in the deck because they're also playing with Omnath most likely. So that's a great way to enable Landfall twice. But as we predicted, not much going on in the early game. And we found a land luckily, and there's a Parhelion already. So now we can set up a turn 3 Grease Fang, and her opponent won't be able to interact with it. So this could already be game over. And there we have it. We get to rank up as well here. So yeah, Grease Fang can lead to some very fast games. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and no Grease Fang in sight. Double Wayfinder is still quite useful at finding white mana and at uh, filling the graveyard. And then we have several discard outlets, but... Yeah, no Grease Fang is the main issue, no can stay away to bring it back if we happen to mill it. So maybe this is still a mulligan. Okay, we have a can't stay away, so now if we mill Grease Fang we have a way of bringing it back. Problem is we don't have any self mill in hand. So it's not ideal, but I don't really want to go to 5. And our hand at the very least seems functional in the sense that we can cast some spells, interact with Liliana. And then if we mill Grease Fang, we can still combo. So one informant can go. Opponent on Elves. That's a scary matchup, since they can very quickly present a lethal army. So we don't have much time. Liliana, probably not going to be at her best. If our opponent can make a few tokens. And there's a Dwinnens Elite, exactly what we did not want to see. Thoughtseize can have a look. Or I can just play Liliana. Although I'm not sure if plussing or minusing is better at this stage. 
So maybe going for Thoughtseize, take away Collected Company, which they could cast next turn, is still better. See Hand of Double Leaf Crowned, Shaman of the Pack, Clan Caller. That's a scary hand indeed. So multiple Lords, Shaman of the Pack to drain us to death. Honestly, Shaman may be the scariest card since it gives the opponent more reach to close out the game out of nowhere. I think I may be better off actually playing this on white, so if I draw a Stitcher Supplier I can cast it and still play Can't Stay Away afterwards. Your opponent goes for double Leaf Crowned. Still happy to trade for a token. And then I guess we'll give Wayfinder a shot. If we find a land and mill over Greasefang, we're in business. And there's Greasefang and a land. Have to take the Temple Garden. And then next turn Liliana can discard Parhelion once again. So we'll see if the Angel Tokens can keep us alive. Feels like they should. Don't expect any removal for Grease Fang. So we may have done it here. So yeah, Wayfinder needed to both mill Grease Fang and hit an untapped land, which it did. And we got rewarded. Opponent goes for Collected Company, so Double Shaman could still definitely kill us. Shaman plus Marwyn. So how much damage do we take here? Down to six. We've got three blockers. I think we'll still be fine. But that could have uh, worked out poorly for us and our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and we're missing Grease Fang. We've got Supplier and Wayfinder to mill a bunch of cards. Liliana discards Parhelion. So Can't Stay Away or Grease Fang are really the cards we want to draw. So do I mulligan this? Yeah, it feels like I'm better off going to 6 here and looking for a Grease Fang. And there it is. So can keep Supplier on 1. Thought sees in case we need to protect Grease Fang. Maybe necessary. So maybe Ditch Informant, even though if we draw Parhelion it could be useful at discarding it. Could also Thought Seize ourselves in a pinch as a discard outlet. So I think Informant can go. And lead on Stitcher Supplier. There's Parhelion, so... Yeah, turn 2 Wayfinder, turn 3 Grease Fang, if all goes to plan. If I hit my land drop naturally, which we did, we can afford to Thought Seize first. And our opponent also a Grease Fang combo deck. So is there anything that we should prioritize taking? Either Can't Stay Away or Grizzly Salvage? Can't Stay Away can get back Grease Fang on 3 if they mill it with Salvage. If I take Salvage, then they don't really have a lot of ways to mill outside of Witherbloom command, which doesn't mill all that much. So I think we take uh, Salvage here. And then we can play a tapped Overgrown Tomb. Hit for 1. Bone goes for Informant. This card's Parhelion, and then they're just hoping to top deck a Grease Fang, pretty much. But we were on the play, so we've got the advantage here. Now I don't have a way of discarding Parhelion here, so if our opponent has their own combo on 3, then uh, they may actually be favored. But our opponent explodes, awesome. So won the mirror on the play thanks to an early Grease Fang. And yeah, sometimes you need to have the courage to mulligan hands that on the surface look playable, just because actually having Grease Fang in hand makes a world of difference. 
So yeah, this uh, Amazon Grease Fang deck does not mess around. Definitely one of the top five decks in the best of one Explorer meta game right now. The Angel Life Gain matchup is pretty tough, like we saw, since they have so many large flyers. And then Mono Blue Spirits is another tough matchup for this deck between all the counter spells, as well as creatures like Shacklegeist that can easily tap Grease Fang down before it gets a chance to crew. Means it's very difficult for us to set up the Parhelion combo, and Isika's Chariot on the ground is unlikely to be good enough. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. I wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.